What's up guys and welcome back. To Today is day one of starting our electrical on our new building. Uh, we start at the point where we're gonna install it and work my way back. I wanted a full-size board or a larger piece of, of wood that I can uh, mount other things to. Maybe a fire extinguisher, a router for Wi-Fi if I need it, the panel itself, another service outlet, switches, anything you might need. It's good to have a nice board in the shop to mount everything to. So I'm using a panel made by Square D. It's a 100 amp uh, main panel. You can use a main panel as a sub panel, just depending upon how you separate your grounds and neutrals. Um, I went ahead and mounted it. You put a level up there, screwed it in, got it nice and straight, ran my wires in from the outside. I am using um, number two wire for my service. Uh, this is gonna be a 70 amp service in this building because it's a long run. I was initially gonna do 100, but it's overkill for what I'm planning on doing in here. One thing to take note of guys on sub panels, your neutral wire, which is this, uh, notated by these white stripes here, and your grounds cannot be bonded. In sub panel, that can't happen. So our grounds are completely separate and isolated from our neutral. This is the ground wire coming from our, our feed, from our main panel uh, at the house. And this is a number six ground that we're gonna attach to a ground rod um, that we're about to pound in outside. And I've got a neat trick to pound in a ground rod and I'll show you that in a second. So here is our main service entrance. Um, I, most people just go straight to the building with a pair of plastic straps or they call them two hole straps. Um, I used a piece of Unistrut or um, affectionately called Kindorf, depending upon the manufacturer's name. Um, I did that specifically so that I can have it stand off from the building a little bit so I don't have to cut um, this flashing here or this channel at all. Um, and you know, being that it's ribbed, the siding is ribbed, it's going to be kind of awkward to get the pipe real flush to the building. So I, I use this to stand off and it's really a, a good mounting system. So we got a bottle of nice clean hose water right here. And what I like to do, here's our ground rod. I just stuck it in a couple inches to get it started and standing there. As I pour a little bit of water in the hole, which is, as you can see, I've done just a little bit, maybe uh, an ounce or two. Get your ground rod in place. And then what I use is an SDS rotary hammer. Now what this is, is basically just like an impact gun, a big impact gun, but you can, um, you can set it to just hammer. And what it does is I've got this, this bit on here. It's nothing more than a hollowed out piece of metal that has the SDS plus attachment to mount to our gun. And you just put it on top of your ground rod, hit the trigger and down she goes. You just sit there either using a T-post pounder or a sledgehammer, just mauling away at the thing forever and ever. You wind up like just galling up the tip of that ground rod until it's like completely mushroomed over. This is effortless. It takes like under a minute and it's a breeze. Let me show you. All right, so this is as far down as I can reach from the ladder. So by looking at the last clip, uh, it took about 39 seconds to get that far down. We have about three feet left sticking up in this nice hard red clay. Um, let's get this down the rest of the way. All right, so that's about as easy as that could possibly be. Sometimes you will get down a ways and you'll hit rock or something, and it'll, you'll see the rod just stop moving altogether. Um, don't lose heart, don't give up, but just keep hitting it with that SDS hammer and it will break through the rock eventually, and it'll start going down real easy again. So there may be easier ways of doing this. Um, I've not heard of them, so I kind of stick to this method. This bit, um, I'm not sure what brand it is or when I got it or what I paid for it. I've had it for quite some time. But um, I've seen them uh, through just browsing on the internet and Amazon even. Um, they're not tremendously expensive at all. So 
if uh, pounding a ground rod is in your future, look into getting yourself an SDS uh, hammer, like a rotary hammer, and one of these bits that's specifically meant for this, and they sell them in different sizes too. Um, I think this one is 5 8 to 3 quarters, which is kind of, um, 5 8 is the, the common size ground rod, so uh, I think you can get them in half inch too for the thinner ground rods. So some of you guys might be wondering, well, I saw a ground coming in from your four wire feed. It had that green wire on there, which is a ground. Yes, that's true. Why do I have to put a ground rod at the building if it's already connected to ground? Well, local code calls for um, a separate ground rod when you, add, when you have an outbuilding or a shed or anywhere you're running power to. In some municipalities, you actually have to have two ground rods. Very good. All right, so our electric service to our shop is complete. Now, I know I didn't have the cameras rolling and show you every little nitty bitty grit of what went on here, but I figured rather than watch a trench or throw dirt for an hour, I'll just explain to you everything that we did. So as you saw, we mounted our panel inside. That's the first thing that we did. Got it all lined up, mounted our board, got our panel level. We came out here, drilled the hole, soldered our LB connection and our service entrance down. Then as I showed you guys, we pounded in our ground rod with our little nifty trick with the SDS gun. Um, this little device right here is actually mounted the um, incorrect position. It's supposed to be horizontal. I don't really need that. Um, let me explain to you what that is. It's called an inner system bonding bridge. Um, what it's really for is it's meant to be a connection point for other things that might require a ground like telecommunications and things like that. If you notice outside of your home where your electric services are close to it, there's something similar or you'll see extra ground wires maybe going to your cable box or your internet service or something like that. That's what these devices are for, and they're starting to require them in code. I probably likely won't have anything mounted in there that's going to require an additional ground. However, the reason why I wanted to use this is actually not what it was intended for. I wanted to actually ground the building itself. So this mounts to the building. Um, usually they screw right to siding and stuff like that, but I figured this has a metal base, and I drill out the steel post behind it and attach it to it. Now my building is grounded with my ground wires connected. So our service is earth and our entire building is also bonded to ground. So then we had our trench dug. Take a walk with me. We did 171 feet of trenching. My friend Marshall was here helping me out again. He was running the trencher a little bit. I was hooking up wires. So we popped up right there into what I call a Wegman box. It's actually just an eight by four inch box or a splice box, if you will. If I ever need to do anything or access this wire or pull something or get to it, I have an access point right in the middle of the run. Um, it's not necessary, you didn't have to do it. I just wanted it there for peace of mind. So from there, we ran along the side of our house, behind the gutter, up over the AC and tap right into our service panel, which actually has half of it as an exterior load center, which came in really handy. As I was working over here and I uh, show you my prehistoric air conditioning unit, I noticed this guy who has been, let me see if I can get you to focus. Oh, Mr. Frog, there he goes. This little frog has been hanging out on that fan blade all day long. Well, not all day, but as long as I've been here. You haven't moved one bit, have you, dude? So a little bit more about the service. I installed a 70 amp breaker here for the shop. Why? You have a 100 amp panel over there with a 70 amp breaker, 70 amp breaker here. Well, <laughs> I was actually talking to one of my electrician friends about this and I haven't done this work in a long time, so I kind of slipped my mind. But when you have a run this long, I ran number two wire. And when you start running over a long distance, you can have what's called voltage drop. So this wire is good for 90 amps, it's rated for 90 amps, but why don't I put a 90 amp breaker? Voltage drop. If I have a 70 amp breaker, you do your voltage calculation and that gives us exactly what we need over there. The 100 amp switch on that load center, that electric panel, you have to disregard what it says on it. It's just a disconnect. It's just to turn the panel off. There's not 100 amps there. Um, 
the breaker protects the wire and we have a 70 amp breaker here installed that protects our run all the way to the shop and it's more than enough amperage that i'm ever going to need in that shop now a lot of people tend to go really overkill when they're doing electric service um though or a shop or a garage or something like that they always want 100 amp 200 amp that's necessary if you have heavy production work going on people always say well i'm running a welder well what kind of welder are you running are you running a little miller 215 welder like i have um, it is a 240 volt welder, but what kind of welding are you doing? I'm doing hobby welding. I'm doing fabrication, stuff like that. I'm not doing heavy production welding where you're welding for minutes and minutes and minutes at a time and you're on that trigger and you're consuming a lot of energy. Regular little welders, you're fine. It's just not going to consume that much energy. Not that there's anything wrong with installing a larger service than you think you're going to need. That's fine too. I just know what I'm going to use. I know that a 70 amp, I'm going to have more than enough available. Oh, one more thing before I forget, because I know I might get asked in the questions. Um, why did I run the electric service so close to the ground, especially over here? This the ground is sloped, so it looks higher this way. Why did I run it so close to the ground? Great question. Um, the reason is this window right here is our eating kitchen. There is talks of expanding this and making a formal dining room coming out here and coming out here, maybe like a 12 by 15 or something like that blowing that whole thing out and building um, a, a, a formal dining room. So that's something we're talking about doing. Not yet, YouTube, don't get excited. Um, my bank account's still very angry about this shop build. So one day we plan to expand this. Um, anyway, the floor ends right about there. So I didn't want to have to, you know, if I ran the pipe at that same height or higher, I'd have to relocate this electric service once we start this addition. And uh, so I was just kind of thinking ahead. That's why I ran it low so that I could, you know, just build right around that and not have to disturb it. So that's it. Shop's got power, ready to go. Next step, I think we're gonna probably wire in maybe um, a porch light or an entryway light. We got some juice, got some safety. We got our exterior light. Uh, switch. Get some kind of power going on there, a light, just so we can see what we're doing. The whole thing is going to get wired soon. That's another project coming up that'll probably be a full video. Like I said, uh, I got to recoup a little bit just because I don't know if you guys seen the price of wire today, but it's crazy. So in another video, it'll be another project. We'll wire the whole shop up and uh, we got big plans for in there. So lots of videos are going to be about this shop. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch you on the next one. Be good.